In this lesson, we want to review the concept of a polynomial. So before we kind of jump into the definition of a polynomial, we want to start out with the definition of a term. So this is something that is fundamental to the study of math. In case you've forgotten the definition or you never heard it, basically a term is a number. Okay, so it could be a single number like let's just say 13 or the product of a number and one or more variables raised to powers. So you could also have something like 2x or you could have something like negative 4x squared y or we could have something like 5x to the fourth power y squared z cubed you know, so on and so forth. Now, one thing to point out here is that if you have a number that is not multiplying a variable, so like in this case, we have 13, it's just hanging out by itself. It's referred to as a constant, or you could say it's a constant term or just a constant. Its value is not going to change. It's always just gonna be 13. If you have a number that's multiplying a variable or variables, and let's just take this two here, it's referred to as a coefficient. So here, two is the coefficient of the variable x. All right, now when we work with terms, you're gonna come across this definition called like terms. And like terms are terms with the same variable parts. So this is very, very simple when you only have one variable. When you have more than one variable, it can get a little bit more complex. So with one variable, let's just say we had three x squared and four x squared. We have the same variable, you have x and you have x, and you have the same exponential power here, right? You have two and two. So these are like terms. These are like terms. But if I had something like, let's say three X to the fourth power and four X cubed, these are not like terms. These are not like terms. And why is that the case? Well, they're not the same, right? You have an X and an X, but you have a four and a three. So you have to have the same variable parts. We could have like terms if we change this guy into a four, right? Cause you'd have a four and a four, but that's not what we were given, right? We were given an exponent of a three there. So these are not like terms. Now, if you have more than one variable, it gets a little bit more complicated. Basically for that situation, each variable has to be present. And each of those variables, each copy of that has to have the same power. So in other words, let me show you with an example. If I had three X squared Y Z and five X squared Y Z, these are like terms. Why? Because I have X squared and X squared, Y to the first power, Y to the first power, Z to the first power and Z to the first power. If I had Y to the fourth power and Y to the fourth power, still got like terms. If I had Z to the fifth power and Z to the fifth power, still like terms. If I change this to Z cubed, I don't have like terms because in this case I have Z to the fifth and Z cubed. So the whole thing fails, although everything else is good, right? All it takes is one to fail. So you have to have the same variables. So I have an X and X, a Y and a Y, a Z and a Z, and they each have to be raised. Each, each copy of that variable has to be raised to the same power. So my X has to be raised to the second power in each case. My Y has to be raised to the fourth power in each case. My Z has to be raised to the fifth power in each case. Okay, that's what gives me like terms. If I saw something like, let's say two X to the fourth power Y squared, and let's say negative seven X to the fifth power Y cubed, these are not like terms. Okay, not like terms. Again, I have X and X, but I have the fourth power and the fifth power. And all it takes is one of them to fail and you could just stop and say they're not like terms. But then you have a squared here on Y and a cubed here on Y. Again, doesn't work, not like terms. So when we place our terms together using either a plus operation or a minus operation, we end up with an algebraic expression. So an algebraic expression could be one single term. So let's say you had the number 14, that's an algebraic expression. 14x squared would be an algebraic expression, you know, so on and so forth. It can be a single term, but it can also be multiple terms that are separated by plus or minus operations. So 14x squared plus 5x plus, you could do square root of x minus five, something like this. In each case, you have a term, a term, a term, and a term, and they're separated by plus or minus operations. So this is an algebraic expression, okay? 
Now, the simplest type of algebraic expression that we're going to come across is known as a polynomial. So a polynomial is defined as a single term. Okay, so it could be one single term or the sum of a finite number of terms. So it just means it has an end where each variable has only non-negative integer exponents. So let's make this a little easier. When we say non-negative integer exponents, we really mean whole number exponents. So let's write that whole number exponents. Okay. So when you're asked if something is a polynomial, you want to look at the variables and you want to look for whole number exponents. So let's look at some examples. So if I saw something like 5x squared minus 1, would this be a polynomial? Yes, it would be. You have a term here that consists of a variable part that is x squared. The exponent there is a 2. That's a whole number exponent. You're good to go. And then you just have minus 1 here. You don't need to worry about any kind of constant term. You're good to go there. You're only focusing on the variables that you're going to encounter, and you need to make sure the variable has a whole number exponent. So as another example, let's say I had 7x squared plus the square root of x plus 1. Is this a polynomial? The answer to that is no. And you might say, well, I just see a 2 here as an exponent. You might not remember this, but remember the square root of x can be written as x to the power of one half. Okay, so you got to watch out for that. If you're taking the square root or the cube root or something like that, that's not going to be a polynomial in most cases, right? There's some cases where it might be if you did something tricky like said I had the square root of x squared. Okay, well, in that case, it'll pass. But you just got to kind of look through things. In most cases, when I see the square root of x, I know I can count that as x to the power of one half. And so this is not a polynomial, right? Because this guy right here, this exponent is not a whole number. As another example of one that's not a polynomial, let's say we had something like 11x cubed plus, let's say we had 15 over x squared. This is not a polynomial. You might say, well, why? I have x cubed and I have x squared it's a polynomial. It's not. And the reason is, is because you have a variable in the denominator. Watch out for a variable that's in a radicand and watch out for a variable that's in a denominator. Because remember, I can write this as x to the power of negative two. This exponent is not, okay, is not a whole number exponent. It's an integer, but it's not a non-negative integer. It is a negative integer. So we have a problem there. So that's not a polynomial. All right, so once you kind of understand the basic definition of a polynomial, you might get some questions in a review section on this asking you, is this a polynomial? Is this not a polynomial? Pretty easy. Again, all you're looking for is, are the exponents on the variables whole number exponents? If you have a variable that's in a radicand, you need to watch out for that. If you have a variable that's in a denominator, you need to watch out for that. If you're given fractional exponents or negative exponents, you need to watch out for that. Okay. So now let's move on and talk about the degree, okay? So the degree of a term, and then we're also going to talk about the degree of the polynomial. So let's start off with the degree of a term. So the degree of a term is the sum of the exponents on all variables of the term. So as an example, if I have something like 14x cubed, I've only got one variable there, the degree is 3, right? I just look at the exponent there. If I had something like, let's say, 55 x to the seventh power y squared. I want to sum the exponents. Seven plus two is nine, so my degree is nine. If I had something like, let's say, 27x to the fourth power, y to the 13th power, z to the fifth power, again, just sum the exponents. Four plus 13 is 17, 17 plus five is 22, so the degree there is 22. Now, what if I put something out here, like, let's just say the number five. What's the degree there? Okay, so we're going to use a little trick for this. Remember that raising a number, or specifically raising a non-zero number, to the power of zero gives me one. So if I multiplied five times one, it would just be five. Well, I could replace this with x to the power of zero. As long as x is not zero, okay, as long as x is not zero, x to the power of zero would be one, and this would just be five, okay? So I'm not doing anything illegal here. But I can look at this guy right here and say, okay, well, my exponent is zero, 
So five, the constant term five has, by definition, a degree of zero. So anytime you run into a constant, you can just say it has a degree of zero. All right, so the degree of a polynomial is the largest degree of any term in the polynomial. So let me give you an example. Let's say that we had 27 x to the ninth power, y to the 11th, z, then plus, let me kind of make that a little better, 15 x, y, z, then minus two. So what's the degree of the polynomial? So you look term by term. So you say, okay, this one's nine plus 11 plus one. Remember, if a variable does not have a visible exponent, it's implied to be one. So nine plus 11 is gonna be 20, and then 20 plus one is 21. This guy right here, you'd have a one, a one, and a one. One plus one plus one is three. And we just said that a constant term has a degree of zero. So you have 21, three, and zero. We just said the degree of a polynomial is the largest degree, the largest degree of any term in the polynomial. So this guy right here has the largest degree. It's 21. So 21 is the degree of the polynomial. Let's take a look at another one. Let's say we had negative 5x to the fourth power y squared minus 2x to the fifth power y and then plus 7z. What's the degree of the polynomial? Well, you sum the exponents. So you say four plus two is six. So this one's six, this one's five plus one, this is six, and this guy right here is just a one. So you have a tie for first place basically, but that doesn't change the degree. The degree of the polynomial is still going to be six. All right, so let's talk a little bit about standard form. When we write a polynomial, it is expected that we place the polynomial in standard form. This means our powers are in descending order from left to right. So this is basically something you want to do, especially when you're first working with polynomials. If you get polynomials with a lot of variables involved, it's typically not as important to write something in standard form because it gets a little messy. But when you work with one single variable, there's kind of no excuse not to because it's very straightforward. So if I'm working with something like, let's say 6x, plus 9x to the fifth power, plus 7x squared, minus 3x to the fourth power, plus 2. I just look at my exponents and I say, okay, this one has the highest, then the next highest, then the next highest, then this would be the next highest, and then lastly, this guy doesn't have a variable at all. The constant term will go last. So I could just reorder this and write it in standard form and say, okay, well, 9x to the fifth power goes first, then negative 3x to the fourth power or minus 3x to the fourth power is next. And then you could say plus 7x squared and then plus 6x and then plus 2. So this would be standard form here. So that's very, very simple, very, very easy to wrap your head around that. All right, so when we encounter a polynomial that has more than one variable and we want to write it in standard form, we basically want to go by degree first, okay? So let's say I gave you an example where we had 2y squared plus negative 3x squared y squared, and then let's say we had plus 6x to the seventh power. Okay, so if I look at the degree of each term, this guy is a 2, this guy is a 4, this guy is a 7. So if I go in order of degree, I would put 6x to the seventh power first, I would put minus 3x squared y squared, or you can put plus negative, it doesn't matter. And then I would put plus 2y squared. Okay, so this would be standard form. Now, let's say we had a tie. Okay, we had a tie. So let me give you an example like that. So let's say we had something like 9x to the fourth power y plus 7x squared y cubed minus 15, then plus 12 x cubed, y cubed. So what's going to go first? What's going to go second? You know, so on and so forth. This guy would have a degree of five. Four plus one is five. This guy would have a degree of five. Two plus three is five. This guy would have a degree of zero, right? A constant term has a degree of zero. This guy would have a degree of six. So we could write this guy first. It has a degree of six. But what do we do here? We have two terms with the same degree. So when this happens, most people will tell you to go in alphabetical order. So in other words, we have the variable x and y. x comes before y, 
So we would look for the term that has the highest exponent on x. So this guy has an x to the fourth power. This guy has x squared. So this is the term that's going to go before this term because in alphabetical order, x comes before y, and this guy has an x to the fourth power. So we would put plus 9x to the fourth power y, and then plus 7x squared y cubed, and then minus 15. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of clarification on the topic. You might see some computer programs or some people out there that show a different method to do this. That's okay. You know, generally speaking, when you think about standard form, you're talking about a polynomial with one single variable. It's agreed upon that that goes in descending order of the powers. And essentially, you don't ever have any problems with that. When you run into a situation with two or more variables, then you kind of get a little bit of disagreement out there. You might punch this into a calculator and say, simplify, and it might give you a different order than this. At the end of the day, you're going to have the same answer, and that's what matters. All right, so lastly, we have special names for certain polynomials. A single term polynomial is known as a monomial. So that would be something like the number three, or it could be something like 4x squared, or it could be something like negative 7x cubed. These are each monomials. A binomial, okay, think about bi, that means two. A binomial means we have a two term polynomial. So something like 4x minus one, or 12x squared plus three, or let's say 15x to the seventh power minus 2x, something like that. And then a trinomial has three terms, right? Think about tri, tri means three, right? You think about tricycle, it has three wheels. So we would have something like, let's say 5x squared minus x minus three, or as another example, 90x to the fourth power plus x squared minus one, right? So two examples of a trinomial.